Hi, this is Marcia Jeans, Instructional Technology Specialist, and in this video, I will show you how to use the gallery, specifically the Lesson Activity Toolkit. The Lesson Activity Toolkit can be accessed through the gallery icon on the right-hand side of your screen. I'm going to click on the icon, and inside you'll see the various categories for the gallery. The Lesson Activity Toolkit are interactive tools that can help you make creative lessons more interactive. It can go for any subject or grade level. To access the toolkit, I'm going to click on the plus sign, and it'll open up into several types of categories. There's three areas that I find high, that I highly recommend, the activities, the games, and the tools. Of course, there's other things in the other categories, but those three are my favorite. I'm going to add a page so we can kind of get a blank slate to look at some of these. The first thing we'll look at are the activities. In the activities, they have several different types. They also have a category of examples. So if you want to see which one of those activities might look like in context with actual um, content in there, you might go ahead and look at the examples to get your ideas flowing. The first one I'll show you is the category sort. And when you click on Category Sort, you'll come down to the bottom because that's where your items will appear. I've got Interactive and Multimedia and Notebook Pages and Files. The area that you should go into are the Interactive and Multimedia sections. Once I get down here to the Category Sort, actually the Category Sort comes in five colors. So you can pick your favorite color. I think I'll pick red. And just drag the object over onto your slide. You can move it around, and once you click on it, a blue bar will appear at the top, and you can move it around. You can resize the object, larger or smaller. Now, when you look at this, you're like, oh gosh, what does this do? There is a question mark, and you can click on that. It will help you give you some more ideas. Usually, if you just click on the Edit button, you'll get in and write in and see what it does. This one's very simple. You can just type in two categories, or actually you can do up to three, but let's just do two for now. And I'm going to do a few sorting um, words to sort. Okay, so I have a cat. I'm going to do run, and I'll do pencil, and jump. That's good enough for now. Now you can always change the um, category if you need to. But that one's correct, and these are correct. Um, you can have a solve button. You have several options here. You can password protect it so the kids can't get in and, and change things around if you desire. So let's go ahead and click that, and you'll very quickly see how this works. You just have kids sort, cat, run. I'm going to get a couple wrong just so you can kind of see what happens here. And you can say, okay, how did I do? Oops, I missed a couple. You can reset it, starts it over, or you can click Solve, and it will solve it. So that is just one example of the interactive objects in the um, toolkit. I think you'll really like it. Now let's move on to um, the next section. That's in the activities. Of course, there's a lot more there, so you'll have to explore it. They have quite a few games. They have anagrams and board games crossword puzzles and um, all sorts of things, dominoes. Um, you'll just have to look in here. Again, it's kind of the same idea um, for games. It has, not all of them are interactive, like the these are pictures of dominoes. However, they do have an interactive domino as well. And we'll have to try to find that one here. It's in here somewhere. But again, the games are really neat. You can just look through those. Um, here's an anagram. It, again, I'm going to look at the interactive. Drag it out. Click on the question. If you have any questions about it, click on the edit. And you can get started putting in your own content. Okay? So that's the game section. And then there's a section called Tools. These are really fabulous. I'm going to add another page so we can take a look. Again, they have an example so you can kind of see what some of them look like in context. So for example, here is a click and reveal activity that you might use with your class. 
basically this little red object is the tool, and then the rest of it the teacher just pulled together. So the answer is down there, and you click and you reveal it. So it gives you an example of how you could use the click and reveal in your classroom. So let's say, oh yes, I want to use the click and reveal, but I want to use it in my own. I'll come over here to the tool section and not look in examples. I'll go down to tools. It looks like I have 34 interactive objects that are tools. And here's a click and reveal. So I could put, let's just pretend the answer to a problem. I'm going to just type it right down here. Answer is right here, and I want to cover it up with a click and reveal. I think I kind of need to scroll back up. Where'd you go? There we are. Drag it and put it right on top. And when I click, you can see it. So that's a click and reveal. There's several different shapes of click and reveals. Here we've got, you know, the square and the rectangle and circle. If you need to adjust the size, you'll notice like on the circle it has some little dots there. You can adjust the size on these, right on the corners like so. Um, oh, we even have, we have a star click and reveal and we have a triangle click and reveal. So we've got all sorts to choose from. Now, there's more down here. Um, oh, there's that interactive domino. I knew there was one somewhere. This is kind of neat. You click on it and it changes. If you see a little arrow like this on any of the objects, that means whatever you've taken, you can kind of, I call it spitting it out. So it'll spit it out so you can have um, kind of like a little game going on. And maybe we need to add these up or do something like that with them. Oh, that was a blank one. So anytime you see the little arrow, that is what um, that is used for in the tools. All right, let's go back over here and look at some more tools. There are pull tabs, which are kind of neat. You can put little things on your lesson. So, for example, they can be out of the way. So if you have a lot of information, you can pull them out to reveal. You can put images or you can put text like directions. Okay, so anytime you see the little double arrows, you can actually come in here and you can type something that you need to type. You can type directions or you can type um, hints to a problem and that works pretty cool. So those are the little pull tabs. Again, so much to choose from. Here's another favorite. It's the question answer flipper. So you come into the little double arrows and that's where you do some editing and I'm on the front so you can just come here and you can type your question on the front and then you can type your answer on the back. You can change your font and your style. I'll click OK and look, it flips back and forth. Very popular. So that just gives you a very quick um, look at the Lesson Activity Toolkit. I highly recommend it. It has some fabulous tools. Take time to explore it because I think you'll find it well worth your time. Thanks and hope you enjoyed the video.